Hey folks, it's Rob here at Recruiting Hell, of course, trying to maybe do us another small mini episode here. Want to do a little bit of analysis on the Pong speech, kind of a appendix or maybe an addendum here. Some interesting stuff actually came out of that. Uh, really appreciate all the nice uh, praise and, and con- constructive feedback from uh, folks that attended the actual event. Uh, of course, there's one that stood out to me, though. She and I met after the event. Her name's Sheila. And Sheila, if you're listening to this, thank you again. Really do appreciate the absolutely great feedback. She mentioned a few things that should probably be added to that particular discussion, especially if you are a younger job seeker. Just uh, visiting on a couple of them here, you know, one of the things that Sheila mentioned is it's incredibly important to network with all ages. You know, you don't have to just be a part of a network that's your age, because when you network cross-generationally, you get to tap into some of that experience. And of course, if you're on the older end of the generational spectrum, you can tap into some of that energy and modernness in this case. I think it's a very good argument to say that, you know, matter who seeks you out on LinkedIn, that you shouldn't judge them, either whether it's yourself or if you are being sent this, you should not judge a person by their age based on whether or not you want to connect with them. And actually, you should be going out of your way to looking to connect with people who are not in your general demographic. And that may even be a broader statement as well. Look for people who don't look like you. Get those breadth of experiences. Get those uh, perspectives that you don't have from your upbringing or your college education or whatever you've been doing since, you know, you walked up, <laughs> walked up on this earth. That's one of the biggest things I think you can take away from the extras that I got from this particular conversation. One other thing, and this is sort of directed at both ends as well that, that, uh, Sheila had mentioned was check your style. And what what does that mean? Well, think about what an older job seeker might face. An older job seeker might face a, uh, maybe a tired wardrobe or a time capsule of themselves where they think that, you know, this was the way I looked in 1980, 1990, whatever it might be. This is my best self. And actually Sheila made an excellent point that people often dress as they were at their peak, which is a very interesting thing. And I actually had not heard that before. So I want to pass that on to you, dear listener, to say, you know, if you are a job seeker who is maybe over the age of 40, and again, that's an arbitrary number in this case, uh, no matter what your age is, this is fairly solid advice. Check your style. Think if you're a, I don't know, if you're in your, in your 60s or so, you know, you were in your, probably your peak Somewhere in the 1980s, you might still have that teased hairstyle. You might still have, you know, thicker glasses and things like that because they they still work and they definitely have a uh, retro style to them, if you will. So that's something to definitely take a look in the mirror and sit down with somebody who is blunt and brutally honest with you and have them say to the question, you know, how do I look? And have them say the things that are coming to their mind. I think that's a really great way to continue to push yourself out of your comfort zone, especially when it comes to your style. Because when you show up looking like you walked out of the 1980s at a job interview, that doesn't give an interviewer or a a hiring manager a very positive impression of you. That tells them that you are maybe stuck in your ways. Maybe you are Uh, difficult to have learned new things. That's the kind of thing that you want to make sure that they don't have the opportunity to form a prejudice about. You know, it's a really great thing that we had this opportunity with Pong Milwaukee. And Pong Milwaukee is is a fantastic group. And I want to talk a little bit about them, not so much to say that you listeners should join, but you should find something in your area, your metropolitan area. And I mean, maybe if you live rural, uh, you can find something for your county or maybe for your uh, local municipality. Local doesn't necessarily have to mean, you know, the next major metropolitan area. You know, I live outside of Milwaukee. Milwaukee makes a lot of sense for me, but if I lived in, say, ooh, middle of nowhere, like North Platte, uh, <laughs> where is that? North Platte, uh, South Dakota, Kansas, Kansas, North Platte, Kansas. That's the widest spot in the road for a, quite a ways. And so looking at the county level, looking at the 
the nearest population centers and things like that, that's going to be probably your best bet. So find networking groups on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Twitter even, or even on Reddit that you are able to connect into. And to tie back to earlier in this little mini episode, look for people in different demographics than you. That is going to give you the best opportunity to network, to find out some of the similarities. Because you know what? Underneath it all, all the crazy prejudices that we have in life, we are all the same. And that's a wonderful thing. We are all human beings. We are all people and all citizens of this world. And finding out the experiences of others is a great way to open your eyes and, of course, make you a more well-rounded person for your job interview and your job uh, search approach. Very, very, very useful thing. So get into one of those networking groups. Find something that is active, that is, I don't want to say popular, but has at least a a small community. You can tell the size of the communities on LinkedIn, which is a fantastic thing. So find something that's, you know, maybe not five members. Find something that's maybe 50 members, 70 members. Find something that has a real resonance with your desired career. And then go in and network for the give. That is one of the biggest things you can do to continue to progress your career is network for the give. And of course, find these local groups who are interested in marketing or interested in sales or interested in finance or interested in banking or interested in whatever your chosen career path has been or maybe what you want it to be eventually, make sure that you're looking at these groups and giving them a good reason to let you in, if you will. Again, network for the give and asking questions and asking, hey, I'm interested in this. I'm curious what I could do to get into this industry or get into this kind of thing, asking people for their advice is a wonderful, wonderful way to break the ice. So to close up here, folks, you know, there's a lot that we can definitely learn from the speech that was given at at Pong Milwaukee. And again, I'm so thankful to them for the opportunity that they gave me. You know, that was basically my first public speaking gig. And I've done public speaking before, but at the same time, it hasn't been the impactful type of public speaking that that was. So I'm, again, incredibly thankful to them, and I'm incredibly thankful to you for listening to this show over the past nine months. And we're coming down to the the end of Season 2 here. We've done two micro-episodes, which is kind of fun. This is the second one, of course. And I'd encourage you, if you're having some trouble in your job hunt, reach out. Drop me a connection on LinkedIn. Drop me an email saying, hey, Rob, can you take a look at my resume? Whatever it might be, I want to get you helped out because there's that mission There's that mission that made me say, you know what? We got to keep this show going and we're going to go to at least a hundred episodes. That's, that's my, that's my promise to myself and my promise to you, which is going to be outstanding. So again, if you need that help, reach out, make those LinkedIn connections, learn a little bit from the show and make sure that we can have those conversations to help you network, teach you how to network and teach you how to get a job because that mission of 10,000 job seekers educated, a hundred of them getting a job and then 10 lives saved because people aren't ending their own lives due to a lack of meaningful work, that's a meaningful and very deep goal. And I'm very glad that I set it for myself and, of course, for this show. So if you know anybody who might benefit from this, give it a share. Maybe even one of these short episodes is a great way to start them in and get them on the path to saying, hey, you know what? I need to up my job hunting game. And, of course, Recruiting Hell is here to help you do that. Remember... It's a marathon, not a sprint. And we're going to be here to help you keep pace. 